that, this that, that. is being recorded. Hello to everybody at home. Hello, if everyone waves to everybody at home, wave, wave, wave. Like, yeah, that's it. Welcome everybody at home to the Wednesday night, Wednesday the 6th of April sharing session of Hot Poet Sparks. I have just explained all about it and forgot to record and Mike pointed out. So if you don't know about the project, then please just go to the website and read about the project. But it's about science, climate science, action, agency and poetry and how we can work together better. And this wonderful group of poets tonight have been spent the last six weeks working with me and Chris and also Johnny Fluffy Punk and Francesca Beard to write their own poems, their own hot poems. And it's been, what's it been like, Chris? Uh, it's been a mind bender. Um, so uh, ev everybody in the project, including us, has sort of been guinea pigs in a process that hasn't happened before. So we haven't run this process before and everyone in the process hasn't done this process before. So the whole thing was a big experiment. And when you do that in any creative process, there are kind of bumps along the way. And there are bits where you feel like your brain's getting wrung out and you're sort of triple thinking everything. But that's the pleasure and the challenge of it. And uh, hopefully we kind of emerge out the other side with some fresh perspectives and some new work to share. I'd just like to just flag up uh, now that um, I am lone parenting tonight, so my wife's out, which means I've got two children putting themselves to bed. Uh, it should be fine, but if I have to disappear uh, at any point during the next couple of hours, I'm, uh, you know, solving some small, I'm sure, not emotional at all, minuscule logistical issue with calming and uh, switching to uh, an audio book or something. Forgive me if I am not present for a few minutes. That's that's my um, preamble. I really love the fact that um, a couple of times, whoever is mycelium thinking has been trying to get in. And I, I love just getting a warning saying mycelium thinking is in the waiting room. <laughs> um, something quite satisfying about that. Um, ah, it's you, mycelium thinking. Hello. It's Rima, Hello. isn't it? Uh, is it Rima? Rima? Yeah. Rema. Hi, Rema. Hi. Um, so, shall we? Because we've got quite a lot of people to, uh, to to listen to and engage. Is there anything we need to do first, Liv? Um, just to say, if you can see the list and you're supposed to be performing and you're not on it, please write, write in the chat. I'm supposed to be performing and I'm not on it. And that would be amazing. Um, we are going to get Chris Redmond to warm up the evening. I did it on Monday and I think it's it's it'll be warmer for the Chris's impact to share with us his hot poet's poem originally. Well, and, and, and I will do it in a way that hopefully gives a clue to you guys who are going to be sharing your works. It's kind of useful to contextualise a little bit because there's quite a lot of research has gone in. So if there's people just rocking up today without really much understanding, um, it's good to give a couple of lines, short lines about your project. What was your spark uh, before you launch in? So my spark, my project, my writing um, was about... Um, Hello, I'm big. I don't I've made you big, yeah. So yeah, yeah, um, it, it's for the people at home as well as the people that, there. That's it's... fine. I've removed that on mine, so I don't have to look at my massive face. But you're welcome to look at it if you want to. So um, <laughs> my, my, I worked with um, a group of Dutch holistic engineers who have the extraordinary ambition and technological know-how to re-green a huge area of the Sinai Peninsula. They're called the Weathermakers. Um, I recommend you check them out. They're quite an inspiring bunch. And this is my poem about them. Um, sometimes you have to think big and small at the same time. A grain of sand on your finger while staring at a beach, raindrop in a jar. At the northern point of the Sinai Peninsula, connecting Egypt to Asia, there's a lake called Bardawil. 10,000 years ago, it's tens of metres deep, a bird and fish fest. Green mountains blessed with rivers like arteries. Plants breathe, winds lift the sea's mist, gift this Eden with all the rain it needs. Life is abundant. Our ancestors do what our ancestors do. They farm, plant crops, graze, cut trees, grow their wealth and families. They take and sow and cut and grow until there aren't enough trees left to catch the wind or shelter from the sun. Rain slow, soil dries, animals overgraze, increasingly it's more heat haze than sea spray. Soil 
washes down hills, fewer plants grow, soil washes, ah, soil fills up the lake, excuse me. Today, it's one and a half meters deep, too salty and hot for fish. Rivers are dry, garden is desert. But we know more than those who've come before. We have microscopes, peer at isotopes in organisms. We study Earth's regulating systems and some have learned that soil is not necessarily dead. It may just be sleeping. What if we could wake it? There are maverick engineers with magic eyes looking big and small, examining weather patterns, soil composition, the position of the lake, and they think they've found what it takes to reboot this Eden. Sediment, fertilizer, sleeping in salt water. Step one, wake the lake, dredge it, flush cool water in, hot water out, fish will flourish again. Plant salt marshes and wetlands, their roots will activate the soil, birds will return. Step two, re-green the land. In rows of greenhouses, desalinate the sediment in sun-powered water tanks, flush with algae, plants, bacteria, insects, tiny fish, each a giant petri dish of everything life needs. Each greenhouse seeds the sea steamy scene for a self-sustaining system. When that system's on its feet, move each house, repeat, reboot the soil. So a patchwork of green. Step three, change the weather. Fog nets capture moisture from the air and hold it there, make it rain. Dikes and dams are dug to send it where it needs to go. Streams begin to flow. The water cycle knows exactly what to do again. We dig fields plant crops, graze animals. Within decades, they say, from desert to garden, extracting gigatons of carbon. Catch the winds, make them blow a different tune. Let flowers bloom again. Earth is abundant if we let it be. Perhaps we just need to look differently. All the keys are here. Imagine a future we love rather than one we fear. Badu. Oh, and you can unmute yourselves to make some noise for Chris Redmond. If you watch Woo! the TV at the same time, please do it up. Oh, oh. Great topic. I'm rem you. removing the spotlight. Uh, <clears throat> a superb hot poet's poem about an incredibly complex and exciting um, engineering scientific project. Um, thank you for warming us up. So what Chris's job will be is to nominate one of you. What your job will be is you need to context your poem. So just with a couple of lines, say what your spark was, what the invention or the idea was. If you have anyone to thank, do that. But don't go on for too long because we really don't have a huge amount of time. But Chris, who would you like to nominate to launch this sharing event? Someone brave. I would like to nominate Bethany Louise Harris to bring hot poets into uh, into the mix. She either had to, to, to finish this one or she had to start this one because yeah. of her poem. So um, so let, let, if you, uh, let me just spotlight you. Hi, Beth. How are you this evening? Hello. I'm very well, thank you. How are you? <laughs> I'm <laughs> I'm I, I'm I'm very glad not to be putting my kids to bed because I can hear them screaming um, but I'm good I'm good <laughs> and um tell us about your poem your meta poem <laughs> my meta poem so uh the spark that I decided to focus on was hot poets itself um so thank you Liv and Chris because I do believe that changing how people interact with science really is quite key to making a big change um so yeah I found it quite inspiring so this is a very meta poem called I am a hot poem I am a hot poem I'm a boundary breaker a dopamine creator an accessibly formatted fact translator, a paradigm shift for the adrift in the form of a plant-based ink printed gift on paper. And I started with a spark. Climate change, two words that used to plunge us into dark. Our task, 
find a spark. Cut through the doom, the gloom and despair, use poetic devices, make people aware of the gold mine of positive changes out there. We don't have to be scared. In the forge of climate research, we crafted linguistic shovels and dug our heads out of the sand. By science, we were fed. The jaded and despondent armor now shed free to grow a new exoskeleton. Science approved. The Hot Poet Sparks Project sparked a chain reaction. From the Met Office to the United Nations, time for positive conversations to inspire the next generations. We are hot poems. Now, a core aspect of every child's learning, facilitating yearning for earth conscious change, for creation, environmentally friendly innovation. Which organization will inspire me today? Their poems, proudly printed in hot poet books, coniology through kennings, mycelium through meter, sustainable similes taste so much sweeter, a plosive parade of pollution prevention. They grew to be scientists, revolutionary in their profession. I am a hot poem, born from a spark eco-positive messages found through all creative arts. We are woven into the tapestry of humanity at last. We tucked you in at bedtimes, replaced sensationalist headlines, and you grew strong and sustainable like fields of bamboo. Climate change changed because you changed too. Now it's your turn to tell me what sparked hope in you. Hey! <laughs> oh. oh, Beth, I'm just going to remove your spotlight. Oh, brilliant! brilliant. Oh. Thank you. I, oh, it's nice when someone writes a poem about your project, isn't it, Chris? Um, I haven't heard that all the way through this. Process. That's the first time I've heard it. That is really, really gorgeous. Thank you so much for writing that. I'm so, so pleased that it inspired it, and there was some cracking, cracking writing in there. Really loved it. Yeah. really really good writing really great kennings really great rhythms really very poetic and yet you got across so much of the heart and the potential um great start fantastic job we'll definitely definitely use that poem to open the open the book um just to yeah. say that all all the poets um po you'll hear poems you'll hear tonight will be um put into a hot poet sparks book and we will have one more event which will be a book la launch which is probably going to take place in june so um just to say that and best will no doubt be a very good opener um so thank you Beth. just thank you personally that's that means so much that poem so um who would you like to nominate to go next? Oh, it's got to be Joe Butts because I oh, love. No, 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 no. It has no, no, no. Oh? It hasn't. She is the one person who's requested. Please don't put me on until after seven thirty because I imagine someone's coming to watch it. Oh, okay. Oh. Could it not be Joe Butts? It's spooky that that's happened twice. <laughs> Sorry, it's it's toddler bedtime. I'm don't want to. I'm going to get interrupted any minute. That is oh, absolutely yeah. fine. <laughs> So now I've just really hyped you up to everyone. It's a great one. Um, <laughs> I would like to go for, oh, Jack Bedford. Where were where you, Jack? Wave at me. Oh, Jack. Hello. Hello. This is, this is, this is, I'm going to spotlight you. How are you doing, Jack? Yeah, not too bad, thank you. Um, and, and for all the people at home, Jack is our, our scientist, one of our partners who joined <laughs> us as a poet, which I think, again, is pretty meta and also wonderful. Like, yeah, so thank you so much for coming on this journey. How's it been from the other side? Thank you. Well, firstly, thank you for having me. Um, it's been a really, really interesting um, experience. It's been really difficult. It's not something I'm at all used to. I think the last time I had to write a poem was for my GCSEs maybe, um, so a long time ago, um, but it's really useful to think about some of the issues I look at in my work in such a different way and to try and think about how to communicate them um, to a more general audience. And what did you choose to do? What was your spark? Uh, so my spark is regenerative farming. Uh, so basically that is farming in a less industrial and more nature friendly way because there are lots of benefits uh, to be had for the climate and also for biodiversity. Amazing. Well, let's 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 hear. Let's come. I, I feel like we should all kind of give some kind of support to Jack, the scientist in the, in the poet's playground. <laughs> um, 
Glennon, you love. Let's let's hear your poem. Thank you. Okay, it's called A Field Regenerated. Uh, I'm going to look off to the side because that's where it is. <laughs> uh, mechanical teeth carved me into submission, damage belied by smooth trenches. Seeds sprouted, shot skyward, hopped up on chemical showers that sterilized any other life. Different jaws descended, leaving no stalk behind. Exposed, my soil silently bellowing out climate cursing carbon. Little life clung to my bones. A frosty shout from a crow, dying stems huddled under evaporating hedgerows. Every year, patched and dosed up enough for one more yield, over and over, exhausted. But then, after harvest, my skin was shielded. A fleece of clover, radish and rye warmed me through winter. Soil saviors, growing roots stabilized and enriched my earth, stemming the bleed of the past. Water soaked into my depths, satisfying an aching thirst. Soft lowing, a mob of long lost companions, gently grazing cows, patting me on the back for years of toil. Bevies of beetles descended, buried the fecal feast, met by earthworms waiting below. Primeval muck spreaders strewing sustenance to every corner, infusing fresh promise. I became a nature reviver. Wildflower carpets burst with heady pollen, enticing waves of insects to reclaim their home. Linnets rain choruses from a blackthorn stage as harvest mice build tennis ball nests in my ripening crop. Unseen, another change. My daunting bellows shrank to a splutter, then whispers, then stopped. Dormant CO2 safely stored under my living blanket, no longer sowing climate chaos. Reinvigorated, I'm full of food, carbon, life. If I can change this much, just imagine what's possible beyond, beyond my hedges. Allow nature to imbue herself through my neighbor's fragile frames. Let them breathe deep, swallowing carbon to slumber in the nation's soils. Then cultivate a new farming balance, a calmer climate, a wilder landscape, and bountiful produce for generations to come. A countryside resilient, regenerated, renewed. Oh, oh please unmute yourself for Jack. Woo. Woo. Oh, inspiring. <laughs> that was great, Jack. Oh. That was great. Yeah, well done. <laughs> I, I was I was hooked. I was with you all the way, which is good because I've got a terrible attention span. And um and some of your imagery, you really you really did change that scientific language to poetic language. And I really felt the the sort of the natural imagery, the field mice, the the cows patting the field on the back, and the use of personification. It worked really well. Thank you. What What do you reckon, Chris? Yeah, it's really the same, same, just really rich, really rich. It's just like bursting, really bursting with life. It was glorious. Yeah. Crack Thank it. you very much. And, <laughs> you, and you got across your message. I, I, I'm like, yes, regenerative farming. That's the way forward. I mean, it, it got across the message too. So um, do you read, do you read the chat. There's a lot of love. There's a lot of love for you in there and, and you too, Beth, um, if you didn't already. Um, yeah, that's 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 a nice place to show the love, and you are. So keep going. It's nice to see it all. Yeah, keep putting um, your feedback. So Jack, who are you gonna who are you gonna nominate next? I'll put the mm. list up, Jack. So you. So oh, that would uh, be great. Thank you. So you can, <laughs> I'll just I'll just take it off the people who have been. Um, there you are. Great. Um, shall we go with Leslie? Leslie. Let's go. Let's go with Leslie. Excellent. Yeah. And Jack, how do you feel, by the way, after this? Is that your first time performing a poem in front of an audience? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's all right. I was, I was surprisingly nervous. I feel like I need a very deep breath now. <laughs> but all good. Yes. You Thank take you for being such a, a warm and friendly and supportive crowd. You did a good job. You did a really good job. Take that deep breath. You Thank deserve you. it. Um, so, Leslie. Um, hi. Hi, Leslie. How are you this evening? I'm not bad, but nervous, like the Monday what people said. Was it Tim who said on Monday he wasn't so much nervous for himself as for his poem? Mm -hmm. 
yeah 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 um is that how you feel yes <laughs> so, so tell us about your poem what's the spark that inspired it well i've long been passionate about um respecting and conserving uh rivers and fresh water as a, a natural a natural resource and uh, as there's so much under threat i thought i would like to explore river pollution so i've uh, like to express my thanks to Tim Stevens from Wessex Water, who I don't think is here yet, and also Ian Myers from the Southwest Environment Agency, who again is hoping to come later. Oh, I know. Does that mean you miss, miss sharing in front of them? Uh, well, I, I don't think either of them were convinced that they would actually, you know, get here in it. time. So okay. I shouldn't worry about it. Well, they can have the recording, Leslie. Mm -hmm. So um, and go for it. Relearning the river. The river starts in our front garden, in drains and rain from roofs and driveways, with dirty runoff from roads and car parks. Concrete cousins of the river become drunk with extreme rainfall, spewing in the river's face. We'd forgotten where stormwaters go, but measuring now what we need to know, modelling floods against river flow, we're creating the science to correct our mistakes. Our rivers are blighted, but we're streaming a light on their plight, restraining the phosphates, shining a beam on the pollutants in our streams with maps of data and height design, reducing contamination and eutrophication, eliminate nitrogen, increasing oxygenation. Rivers are a washing machine designed to self-clean. One solution with pollution is to grow riverside trees. Riparian edges support the bank, rushes and sedges, prevent sediment and argi. At home we plant hedges, flower beds, gravel and grass, to reduce the risk of river flooding. Once the banks are restored from erosion, we can expect an explosion of green, fertilizing the dream. A stony bed breeds more larvae, more dragonflies feed more fish and kingfishers. More reeds mean more water voles, weeds and trees nurturing a clean climate machine. Plants and land, water and trees, we understand their connection. Glorious. Thank you. Yeah. That was great. I love the kind of the, the the sort of weaving rhyming journey of it. Um, I felt like it uh, it kind of it, it it felt a bit like a river in itself in the in the way it, it kind of meandered and sort of ducked and dived and and uh, and sort of got in little eddies and then came out of it again so there was really lovely movement in it I can't help thinking uh, uh, that I'm all, this is a game that I play in my head all the time so when you said dirty runoff I was like that is a great name for a band and um <laughs> <laughs> and they might have even written a song called Concrete Cousins. So I enjoyed that. So thank you. Um, and then and there was a section at the end where you were talking about it's like more, more this, more, more dragonflies means more food for trout, more weeds mean more water bowls. And I just thought, oh, how, how refreshing to, to pitch it as a more this means more this means like to be to consider abundance rather than lack and this whole conversation about climate we always focus on what is going and what is disappearing and just by switching it and making it if we do this we get more of that we get more of that i felt myself lifting so that's the whole point of this isn't it so yeah thank you 
And, mm, and just let me say, Leslie, I, I saw the last version of that and you have done a massive job testing <laughs> it, bringing in the solutions and the, and the kind of yeah. and the potential and the positives in the, since I, I last heard it. So, yeah, really brilliant job on the last rewrite. It is so strong now and it really does. It tells both sides mm. um, and and make and I feel like I learned a lot listening to that <laughs> river poem. I feel mm. like I've learned a lot already. I'm just three poems in tonight. So, um, <laughs> well, well, you know, really good job and really good rewrite. Um, Leslie, who would you like to go next? Oh, shall I, shall um, I put the list up? Chris. Davy on eco burials. Chris Davy on eco burials. So the river is now taking us under the ground to where the bodies were buried. Okay, I'm going to move over to to Chris. Hello, Chris. How are you this evening? Evening, everybody. Um, yeah, I'm really good, thank you. Excited to be here, and yeah, just everyone's been absolutely awesome so far. Um, and Mondays as well. Monday's uh, session was yeah, really, really incredible. Yeah, very exciting. Um, tell us what your spark was, Chris. So my spark was an organisation in Scotland who are seeking to use um, uh, natural burials to fund rewilding projects. Um, so I mean, for me, it kind of like it felt like a project that had the ability to transcend just its ecological benefits. Um, I think like if we're better able to understand ourselves as part of a wider system of energy that kind of flows and decomposes and regenerates, then we'll be better equipped to deal with all of the upheavals that are coming. So this is called Welcome Home, Weary Traveller. Funeral parade crosses half-healed furrows. Shouldering shrouded offerings, seeds twice sown. Pulled bared across industrial land, tirelessly tilled by generations of leather hand tear misted, groaning under strain of unnatural growth, now fallow, planted with a new crop, laid shallow so residual energy can suffuse exhausted earth, nitrogen, phosphate, carbon, a subterranean bloom, time untames, shedding order, Carving chaos from tyrannous monogamy. Abundance, unchained from seasonal specificity, spills into this nascent glade of swaying saplings. Arboreal denizens take up silent stewardship, sinking gnarled toes into crumbling chocolate soil to entwine with rib and spine and reuse leftover life. Bows bend low to hear ancestral stories told by guests who seek loved faces in knurls of bark. Fingers trace familiar shapes in moss soft cracks. Elders feeling once more the reassuring touch of safe haven and holding small hands that will one day bury them in the flesh of this rebuilt land. Thank you. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Chris. Oh, that was chewy. That was <laughs> chewy. Yeah. <laughs> Glorious. So, well, I mean, you've tightened that and you've trimmed that and you've worked on every single word of that, haven't you, Chris? I feel like it's so tight. It's so well edited and just yeah it, it's it's brilliant you've done such a good job and I can I I can feel how hard you've worked but you've also managed to really streamline it to this beautiful emotional story but also get in the whole science and the nature of it and just bang on job yeah absolutely Thank cracking. You. absolutely I love the scale of it um that you you've got this the specifics and the soil and the kind of the the dirty detail uh but then you've got this you know the bigger picture the meta as well and i think to hold both of those is is is, is a really great achievement um yeah really cracking thank you hazel saying you. I hear this is a bob dylan song mm. <laughs> the connection between life and death ancient and futuristic um there you go high praise indeed um if you like Bob Dylan, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and we're, we're all poets here, so most of us, in theory, should no. have yeah, 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 yeah. Um, 
Chris, fantastic, mate. Well done. Um, uh, who are you going to nominate next? Um, two seconds. Let me um, scroll back oh, up. I, I can put the list. I can put the list in. So I should have obviously done that. And uh, that's where I live. I found it. Um, let us go with um, Rima. Rima. Rima, Rima, wave at me, Rima, so I can see you. I'm sure you're wearing a uh, hat, is what I was going to say. Um, Hi. Hi, Rima, mycelium thinking. How are you this evening? Uh, nervous like everyone else, but yeah, excited. I've really loved everything that's came so far. It's really inspiring. I'm glad to have been part of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, tell us what your spark is, Rima. Um, so mine's rewilding mycology, so mycelium. I spoke with a scientist called David Satori and he's at the forefront of it. And it was really, he chat, chatted with me on Zoom, he even screen shared my poem and helped me work through it. Wow. That's um, brilliant. Yeah, fungal conservation isn't really a big thing. There's, it's only him in the UK that's really doing it. So it was really exciting, yeah. Um, my piece is called Mycelial Cascades. One. Born into line, school assemblies, rows of children singing hymns, subjects kept in their places, no doodling in science, a room for grids and digits, another for flourishes on the page. Bunts and learners, textbook sues, beings kept in their pages. Order, order, there's children looking, be on your best behavior. And I felt caged in those pages, in those gray ordered spaces. Lined paper daydreams, a little scribble never fitting on a mental escape. Ecology, dynamic networks of interaction, endless flows between, never ending, ever shifting cascades of relations. Instead, in boxes, the relationships castrated. We create adults that can't be ecocentric, they're wearing the wrong lenses. Beings caged when inspected in isolation. Entangled life is straightened too. Then I found you. No one ever taught me about you. Underneath my feet on a rainy day, beneath me when I went to cry by the old oak tree. And now you're being mapped, explored, given attention. Mycorrhizal fungi are fundamental for ecosystem regeneration. You challenge borders, weave below classrooms in a non-binary fashion, queering ecology. You're cool in your tree-talking, structure-defying swagger. Your ability to subvert natural disasters. You were always under the surface, waiting to embrace my rhizomatic strangeness. Eccentric border evading tendencies could be a holistic solution, an earth healing remedy. Alienation hurts. Lines leave scars. Our planetary skin slashed by linear dreams, delusional hierarchies, positivist simplifications. Our extended body full of potholes, potent plot holes need filling in. I've always had a thing for gaps, unloved things, the in-betweens, the unseen, the messy, the ignored, the ill-fitters, the strange beings, the weirdos, the unappreciated non-conformers. You are all that. Minority voices, scribble-minded dissidents, fungal sentient. What beautiful cascades might surface when the underground becomes sacred, free. Nomadic ecological tendrils have crept well into my sinews. Our fungal dreams are bound to make oscillations. You are the foundation of creation. We are all fruit and bodies of this earth and our terrains are changing, rhizomatic cascades, spores becoming hyphy, branching into networks, radiating, pulsating with new myths. Mycelial cascades of change radiating from the foundation, the invisible, the unloved, emerging through the surface. Stop, look, listen. We are the voice of the weirdos, the so-called weeds, the classroom shirkers. We're the Apollonian heartbreakers, the wild mycelial elopers. We speak in rhizomes, our soily synapses snap together, shaking the foundation. Mycelial cascades are waiting, emerging, ready to breach the borders. Hive minds whispering in sacred hymns, binaries losing face, extended bodies sluicing, melting into a modern human soup of ever-changing relations. Flora, fauna, and funga. 
we need fungal assistance. So may we reintroduce ourselves as co-partners, collaborators, ecology embodied. Forgive us our fungal foreparents, for we have sinned. I pray we loop backwards, relearn, let the networks come in. Whoa! <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Whoa. Amazing. Oh, wow. Wow. I've just got on a mushroom trip. <laughs> wow. That was a nice music soundtrack that. It does, oh. it? It yeah. does. Um <clears throat> incredible Rima, absolutely incredible. I mean it was long, but it every part of it was brilliant and um what a mushroom journey. Um, I'm really blown away by that. That was an absolutely fantastic piece of writing. Um, and it sounded like you also loved writing every moment of it, that I felt that you're, that I felt you and your joy in it. And I love the kind of um, parallel between the kind of the weirdos and the people who, yeah, the, and, 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 and the underground networks. And it was, so we could all hang in as, you know, some of us might consider ourselves to be the weirdos of society. You, you're instantly, you know, bringing the poets in to be part of your gang. And um, it was just brilliant. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's it. You said it, you said it all. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I, I like the mycelium cascades is kind of, it felt like that by the end. It was just this sort of amazing kind of cascading imagery and, and philosophy and science and kind of this really juicy kind of uh, terminology. And then like, just killing wordplay you know all the way through just dropping in those funny little I, I like i put them in the chat and loads of people picked up on it but you know there was sort of you put one in earlier on the bunsen learners and then there was this, what was the other one i can't remember there's loads of them but yeah just glorious absolute what, epic what did your mycelium expert think of the poem in the end rima yeah, because I was going to him to help with the science terminology for a lot of it. It was like, you've really actually got a I was like, I'm quite obsessed with my Celia. <laughs> he did bring in some interesting extra words that I never would have used. But yeah, he, he really enjoyed it. Yeah. Well, you should offer him the poem to use in, use in his communication strategy, I think. Um, I think. It's just brilliant. Well, super. Well done. Yeah, amazing. Who, who do you want to go next? I can put in the list again. Um, if I can remove, oh, I'm a bit blown away by tonight. It, feel, it feels <laughs> already. Um, um, I, I will go with Mike Slippers. <laughs> oh, he's not, is Mike Slippers, actually Mike Slippers isn't here. He's done his. Oh, that's somebody uh, we can knock off the list. Um, that's Mike Slipper Limpet. Um, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and he didn't end up doing Slipper Limpet. So it's a completely misnomer of a name. So yeah, somebody else. Uh, Romilly. Romilly. Are you here, Romilly? Wave at me. No, Romilly isn't here, I don't think. If, let's have a look at the... Um, um, no, like, this it's is... Like, it's like one of those raffles, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> We've Blue got 43. this... <laughs> the I meat raffle. Names on the screen. We've got this <laughs> pack of pork chops that no one's claiming. No, this is good because obviously less... less um, we've got a big lineup tonight, so it kind of helps to sort of trim it a bit. No, so, no, no, Romilly, no Mike slippers. Yeah. Um, Who are you going to go for? Debbie. Debbie. Ooh. Oh, I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> Um, hope, Debbie, you get the pork chops and the bottle of uh, oh, two nuns. <laughs> oh, oh. So, um, my poem was about um, microbes. I, I um, did a Zoom meeting and some emails back and forth with a lovely gentleman called Professor Wilhelm Van Schaaf from Birmingham. And, um, and he was very helpful uh, and enjoy it. And he likes to do stuff with school. So he asked if I could make it accessible to young pe people so I'm not young but I did my best okay Amazing. so this poem is a poem about microbes the eternal co2n magicians we are magicians recycling the elements build it up break it down invisible silent omnipresent millions billions millions of billions of tiny multi-fingered deities too small for the eye to see nature's armies, life after death, death after life, the infinite circle. We were here floating in the primordial soup, single celled, long before multicellular groups, before plankton, before fauna, flora and man, 
Bacteria reigned and we remain thriving with or without you. We have potential destructive power. We lie dormant in the poles, permafrost, hostile species waiting for thaw and release to multiply the methane and raise the heat. Unchecked, we bring pandemic resistant disease. But our nurturing spells infiltrate the world, ferment, let the alcohol bubble and the bread rise, decompose, compost, revive, to release nitrogen and enrich the soil, fueling plants to stretch towards the skies. We can dissolve plastic, cleaning the seas. Gut bacteria can protect you from disease, capture the carbon, improving the air, freeing the oxygen, allowing you to breathe. We are the eternal magicians recycling the elements threaded through life's line, spinning the wheel. That's it. Oh. oh. What a last line. What a last mm. line, Debbie. That is just gorgeous. <clears throat> what, a, what a place to leave it. Oh, thank you. I, yeah. I loved it. I've got this vision of these microbes doing this kind of music video, singing with or without you. Uh, the human race. <laughs> Um, we can, we're going to carry on with or without you so you know but um, I, I learned so much from that poem that was really a great example of how you write science poetry okay. and, also, and also for children and just if you you know to explain microbes you absolutely did that in a really joyful well written way that kind of kept everyone engaged good work um, do you feel that closer to your microbes now Deborah? <laughs> really got it was quite complicated but I got very fond of them almost like I wanted a pet <laughs> well, you, you probably have gorgeous I love that I love that and, and I just loved how I love a poem that finishes before I expect it to finish and then I go ah oh, you've done that and I just felt like you took us on this brilliant journey and then just left us with this really beautiful, simple image, which just allowed us to keep thinking around it. Um, yeah, I love that. Thanks. Thank you so much. So good. Um, and Deborah, you get to pick who goes next. Would you like me to put the new list up? Yes. Um, just... That has got shorter due to the absence. Um, there we are. Who are you going to pick? Do we go for Simon, Simon Williams? Definitely. Simon, where are I can see Simon? He's taken his camera off. Here I am. <laughs> I thought you were going, I'm off. No, um, no, no. Uh, I was just going to switch that, though. I can't, I can't spotlight Cause... you for some reason. Hide non-video participant. Um, no. I can see me. Oh, we can see you, but I can't spotlight you. That's a bit weird. Um, oh, spotlight for everyone there. There we go. Oh, look at you. What are you sitting in front of? I'm Sorry. sitting in front of a, 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 of a power bank. Um, each of those is massive batteries. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's um, the, the rather exciting uh, subject I chose to, uh, to explore. And um, uh, what I thought was that to make the transition from fossil fuels to renewables, we're going to need uh, a lot of battery storage to hold energy from the days when it's generated to the nights when it's used. Um, new battery chemistries using iron and salt water, such as those developed by American company ESS, and I spoke to a guy called John uh, Aronovich uh, in, the, in the States, he was very helpful. Um, they don't require rare earth elements like lithium and could help the trans transition with little environmental impact because the whole chemistry is based on iron and seawater. So, um, so this is my, it's, it's actually partly sung. Um, You'll probably recognize the tune. It's called uh, Taking Charge. <clears throat> power stations by the water, power stations made of clingy, clangy steam from boilers, spinning turbines, power stations all the same. There's a coal one, and an oil one, and a gas one, and a fission one. And they're all made out of clingy-clangy, and they all work just the same. 
and the people in the houses all want cheap electricity but they don't want more pollution when they all go off to work so the teachers and researchers and nhs operatives say they don't want more clingy clangy which all works much the same to make the switch from fossil fuels replace them with renewables we need a fix to time switch from daylight into night we might use lithium cells as in our phones and clamshells, but LI's rare, expensive, and mining it's a blight. New chemistry can store the power, hold energy from hour to hour, a tank of salty water ought to keep the charge contained. Iron is abundant, makes lithium redundant. Farms of steel containers can sustain the unrestrained. And the people on vacation all drive past the solar farms and watch the pretty windmills that all look just the same. There's a white one and a white one and 31 more white ones and they all turn when the wind blows and hum when there's sun. What we need now is batteries to store all the energy so we can boil our kettles, take our showers when it's dark. There'll be boxes full of water to regulate the energy and they'll all be made of zippy zappy and they'll all work just the same. Thank you. Oh. 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 Unmute yourself for Simon. <laughs> that is oh. just, just glorious. <laughs> just glorious. I think to, I don't know, it's, it's all about holding it lightly, isn't it? And um, the, the kind of, obviously the playfulness of the song, obviously the relationship to the original song, but then the dropping in to the, the meat of it in the middle with the spoken section and the, but then going back into the clingy clangy playful and it's it just all feels so simple it all feels <laughs> so simple in the way that you're you present it like that and and that's refreshing because it doesn't feel too overpowering and and it's just yeah it's gorgeous i love that really love it it, 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 it kind of made me cry simon and yeah. i think um i think because although chris says it's simple that song deliberately sim the, the original doesn't it, it deliberately simplifies something that's very complicated yeah. yes. and um and so so you were kind of simplifying it but we all know how complicated this stuff is too and i <laughs> Yeah, it, it was something bittersweet about it, but also, mm. it, yeah, it was, it was such a good, it was such a good idea. So well done and so engaging um, and totally got across your message in a, a very powerful way. And yeah, blown away by it. Like, please go out and perform that. Yeah. With all of your to. open mics and share <laughs> that. And uh, because completely, we need these batteries. We need them to happen now. <laughs> excellent excellent job i genuinely really moved by that so um simon who are you going to vote for to go next uh, oh um i'll go for ollie ollie davy ollie davy excellent ollie wave at me so i can see you hello hi ollie's in another has got another background of um how are you yeah, ollie? magical yeah very good i've been loving it so far absolutely amazing poems and uh, what's going on with you are you up. look at, yeah. i'm standing up um i'm standing up it's quite dark but i wanted to um i was inspired by what um actually never mind about that i was going to change my background to one of mushrooms but um uh, never mind no i'm really good and great poems and particular shout out to my fungi crew with their uh, mycelium poems i've been loving those particularly I, so I've, I've my... been listening to those. I've decided that the book needs just a mushroom section to just house absolutely. all the mushroom poems because there's been some absolute smashes, hasn't there? So, no, um... they really have. It's been great. And my, my spark was um, mushroom related, psilocybin in particular, which is the um, active ingredient in magic mushrooms. 
and uh, my poem is all about the potential for psilocybin to help with uh, transforming our treatment of mental health issues and then ultimately bring about an awakening of human consciousness so we can have a, a better relationship with ourselves with each other and with the planet as well so this is called the journey <clears throat> You haven't left the room, but you are somewhere else. Your mental walls have melted. You have lost your sense of self. The part of you that pins you in, scattered like shreds of paper on the wind. A reboot for your brain. Psychedelics. They make you crazy. Right. What if they make you sane? From atom fine networks under the Mexican earth sprang fungal transport to the divine. For millennia, the sacred tool of shamanism, a shape-shifting dance with nature's patient wisdom. Then came the ships. With them, guns, germs, steel. And a god so mighty, he cowered before the mushroom. A sacrament suppressed, hidden, unconfessed underground but not at rest 400 years a minor test in the 50s the magic mushroom broke its silence and revealed itself to western science boy do we need it seeking status is leading us all over the edge primark doesn't have the answers we should be growing veg what kind of demon set up shop inside his head, said he was fine, then blew his face off behind the shed? Now, in warm spaces, hands held, friendly faces, patients journey to inner places with psilocybin, a trip to mean with an indole ring structure, the deep grooved, destructive behavior disruptor, neuroplasticity conductor, causing obstructions to rupture. The afflictions it could lessen in one introspective session, addiction, obsession, while it made a profound impression on those coping with terminal diagnosis and depression. Evacuate the capital, sack the CEO, cancel the instructor, shut down this ego. And as we merge into some larger totality and explanation for which requires all our vocabularies and still leaves us grasping, we think, Perhaps the Buddhists were right. It's not too late. Survey the signs. There's no need to simply wait in line, breath baited for the great decline. We can change our minds. Thank you. Woo! Woo! Uh, <laughs> right. Just really pulled that into shape over these weeks. Oh. Um, it's just such a great uh, you know someone put in susan put in love this radicalism it does it feels like a, a proper rallying cry but with all of the science and passion and mysticism and spirituality to kind of uh back it up um yeah i love where you take this now i really love the journey of it um and uh and yeah the, the that, that that whole bit about god cowering for however many hundred years and the ships coming and the steel and yeah mm -hmm. it just takes us all over the place in a very short space of time but never loses us we're kind of following mm. it and uh mm. yeah i think you've done a cracking job there you and, totally and just by the way you presented it standing there in that extraordinary backdrop made the whole thing feel quite <laughs> trippy anyway it was quite you were moving you were kind of yeah. looked like you were lying down and stuff um <laughs> So yes. I, I'd not heard it before, but I had heard about the journey and I was really looking forward to hearing it and you didn't in any way let, let me down. There's quite a lot of people I know who are microdosing with mycelium at the moment for mental health and it seems to be really the zeitgeist thing. And it's, and it's, yes. it's a, yeah, it's amazing to hear you bring that together with the science and with the journey and with kind of the, uh, yeah, really, it is a protest poem it feels like that but it feels like it's got some rigorous thought within it as well and uh, great job ollie thank, thank you thank you um, worth the wait um mm -hmm. i'm just i'm just gonna put the list up so you get to choose who goes next um oh it's been so good this evening i'm just so <laughs> i'm feeling really really blown away by 
by the whole thing and what you guys have all come up with and achieved and just what this means to have so many of these poems out there to have made so many of these connections with scientists and organizations and you know it feels like a really big deal um and it's yeah i feel pretty proper moved right so here's your list ollie who are you going to go for okay the list right here we go i'm going to go with micah or mika colombo misha i think misha sorry no, that's sorry thing, misha, yeah, misha. <laughs> misha. Um, but excellent choice hello misha how are you hi i'm good thank god i am loving all these poems it's just such a great night in <laughs> <laughs> But they've done good haven't they yeah, it's, yeah yeah were you there on monday as well we've had yeah a, i was it's just like yeah. so many so many so what have you got for us misha so my spark is seagrass um which is probably a little bit more straightforward than some of the you know um the the more complex subjects but um it's a bit of a sort of unsung hero uh, of the underwater world, uh, which is what drew my attention to it. And our lovely Jack, science poet Jack, um, connected me to um, Becky Noakes, who's here tonight, I think, who um, is a seagrass expert who's now moved into the Derbyshire Wildlife Trust, but she has kind of given me all the info and uh, made sure I was on track. So, yeah. Let me get on with it. So it's called, Have You Ever Noticed the Seagrass? Have you ever noticed the seagrass? Bland strands of background, tangling shallows, as overlooked as an aging woman. Just because you have roots doesn't mean you cannot move. In the dawn of green time, her land ancestors inched towards lapping water and dipped into salty beginnings. Like algae they spread, from Iceland to India, carpeting coasts in pastures large enough to be seen from space for now. Because the seagrass is shrinking and dying of mold and man, poison and propeller, fading into sand and scars, blooming flowers like last ditch sirens. We are plant blind to her places, her plight, her powers. This slow growing prima donna is a carbon guzzling queen, hungrier than jungles. She mellows storms before they batter the land, soothes currents into calm, combs water clean, holding mud, birth, jobs, food in her ribboning fields. We start to grasp her antiquity, her complexity, her incomparable capacity. An aquatic atlas mapping microcosms. Splash of pollock, porcelain crab, nibbling turtle, munch of dugong, glory to cod and inking cuttle, seahorse nods at sponge and mussel, waving starfish, clam, worm, snail. Scientists plant seeds in hope-wrapped hessian, squelching shores to pilot her revival. Breath held, grassroots action in sunlit fringes keeps this goddess clinging on. What will she teach us, this rooting pioneer? From her deep green shadows, oxygen bubbles pop like a million tinkling bells. Oh, Misha, how far has that poem come? <laughs> wow. Wow, well done, well done. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Wow, sir. That, that, look, I heard like the first version of that, and that is a different poem altogether, isn't it? Well, wow. so you did chuck the first version out. And yeah, look, I completely didn't ditch it, yeah. <laughs> look what you made. Sometimes we have to chuck the first version out because that the, the real version is waiting to be born, and that's incredible. Yeah. Amazing lines in that, and really, again, gripping. And you, I mean, I, 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 I definitely want the I Love Seagrass t shirt. I think you could probably <laughs> sell them at the, <laughs> at the gigs where you perform that poem. Uh, yeah, just brilliant. Really, really brilliant and, and a fantastic ending as well. 
what do you reckon for something gushing too much uh, no no i i just i second the gushing um <laughs> I, yeah I, I said it last time i heard it it's just i missed the first minute or so because i was um just dealing with some uh audiobook business but uh, i'm glad i came back in uh, and 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 caught the momentum of it yeah it's really really beautiful and, and hopeful and you take us in to the issue and then you take us out and 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 leave us kind of whooping so a beautiful reading as well it has yeah. to be said um really really great reading and, and no tweeness at all no no sort of yeah n n none of that really it's really edgy in its own way mm. and mm. um um and really well edited as well like tight so mm. <gasps> what a yeah. treat the night that keeps on giving <laughs> a bit like the seagrass um and uh lots of small things giving us hope tonight lots of things yeah lots of microbes and seagrass and mushrooms and you know it's all it's all of all of that isn't it the cellular level or the on the ground stuff it's, mm. it's amazing misha who do you want to go next um i will choose liz liz excellent okay let me find liz waiting patiently i feel like you've been waiting patiently since monday night liz <laughs> You on mute still. Okay, can am I unmuted? You're unmuted. How are okay. you feeling, by the way? Um, okay, thank you. Um, like others, nervous, <laughs> but doing okay. So tell us about your spark. Okay, so um, you probably remember that a couple of years ago there were horrendous bushfires in Australia and um, I remembered reading that some properties where traditional um, Aboriginal methods of fire management had been used had not been damaged in the fires, they'd been spared. Um, so this took my imagination. And so I investigated um, in particular indigenous fire management um, in Australia. Um, and um, talked to um, Gareth Clay, who is an expert in fire at Manchester University, who was really helpful. Um, so, yes, and I learned a huge amount. Um, if anyone's got the time, I read a book called Dark Emu about Aboriginal land management. Uh, so I learned a huge amount, and this poem is very much a tribute to those first people of Australia. So I'll Go read for it. it. Definitely <laughs> okay. do it. Fire in the land, Australia, twenty nineteen to twenty twenty. Fire seeks territory, summons his elemental army. Myriad flame soldiers leap savage, dance and ravish 18 million hectares, two England's worth of land. Superheated hurricane firestorms, incendiary bombs, scrub choked forests, animals roast alive. Trees whoosh and roar into autumn skeletons of char, silhouetted against hazed orange that backlights human refugees on apocalypse seashores. They call it Black Summer. Faced with such destruction, the unwise little siblings, pale as ash, turn to their elders who have lived with fire since the land was dreamed. Beninj peoples of Arnhem Land, East Gippsland speak. Time your fire well in keeping with the seasons. Mark changes. Burn early when the sap begins to fall, not late in summer parch. Make mosaic of burn and growth so animal kin have refuge. Read the winds. Their natural veer will put out fires. The flames run back like hungry children but find no food, no plant natures. When the land cleanser comes, daisy yam must be sleeping. Kangaroo grass, grain provider, 
grows after fire. The younger brothers, sisters, the Belanda scientists listen, watch, learn. Cool burning, say the scientists, fuel loads reduced, flames tamed, less chance of megafires, fewer carbon emissions. Botanists microscope pollen to prove what first Australians already know, where now are understoried forests, seas of grasses grew, may be restored if Aboriginals are heard their long harmony with the land honoured. In Arnhem land, the fire ecologist, traditional owner of Jinkar near Maningrida of Gorguni clan, helicopters over forests, patch burns with fireballs. Wildfires reduced by half, 10 million tonnes of carbon saved. The ecologist walks the land, hopes for young calitris trees, calls to the ancestors, knows their spirits are watching him. Oh, Liz! Liz! <laughs> Woo! Fantastic! <laughs> <laughs> I I heard that one. I, I heard I heard your version last week, and I I was I I I loved it then, and I love it now. It's so much research. Like I, I was just really listening this time, and, and thinking maybe I can learn how to put out for, put out wildfires if I listen to this really really closely. But so the way you balance the kind of ancestral wisdom and with the the actual technical how you actually stop fires and 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 I was thinking with the winds thing when they, they learned sort of naturally the wind patterns so they learned what to plant where in order to press mm -hmm. the fire back into places where it couldn't burn it's amazing isn't it yeah yeah um, it really is. yeah. um incredibly well researched a really good poem um thank you thank you yeah i think i'm uh, doing this i learned the what some poet said that a poem is never really finished you just abandon it eventually and i just went <laughs> on and on and on and on so. <laughs> It was it was a good edit. You did a good edit. Um, Chris, you haven't heard that one before, have you? Have you? Or have you? Um, I I think I've seen or heard bits, but that's the I haven't heard it in its entirety. It's a really really lovely journey. Yeah, loved it. Thank you. Really gorgeous. Yeah. I'm gonna. I've got to run off again. I'll be back. In. <laughs> that was Chris's compliment whilst distracted um, by children. Um, Great job, Liz. So, so well researched. Um, anybody, put your hands up if you learned a little bit more about Aboriginal land management for fires tonight, because I certainly have. Um, and it sounds complicated, but I think we can we can work it out. So, Liz, who do you want to go next? Uh, where's the list? list up? Um, oh, um, here we are. Um, how about Gillian Kavanagh? Gillian Kavanagh. <laughs> yes, indeed. Let me find you, Gillian. Have you got your lip gloss on? That was the. Uh, yeah. That, that was, you got have. The lip, <laughs> got the lip gloss on. It's working for you. It's working for you. So um, I just noticed this chair makes me look like I've got a hump back. Um, no, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. It looks like a chair. Anyway, you're fine. So tell us about your spark, Jill. Okay, my spark. Uh, I used to work a lot in fashion, so I have a passion for fashion. Used to be a fashion buyer. And uh, the amount of waste from the fashion industry. And um, I uh, was working with a lady who is making algae shoes in my current job. And so that got me looking at shoes and what happens to shoes. So, yeah. We want to know, is... Jill, what happens to shoes? I'll tell you, you my poem. Um, so the poem I originally wrote uh, ended up in the bin. This is a different poem now. It's called, shall I carry on? Shall I say it? Yeah. Last Step Landfill. Um, and I want to thank the British Footwear Association and a great website called bettershoes.org, the Ben there, which is full of great information. Uh, so this is last step, last step landfill. 
foot stompers, toe squeezers, squeaky sneakers and dancing divas in glittery rainbow hues. Metallic Bowie platforms, some of the stylish shoes that walk your life from tender steps to softly tread through gladed forests with birdsong overhead. Strut your stuff on a Friday night, run at dawn at the speed of light, a soft sandal shuffle in your lover's arms on a sandy beach under leafy palms. When the tide of fashion turns and the ebb and flow recedes, each twin ends up buried, planted like a seed. An underground mountain of silent souls, nor flowers or trees, uppers and lowers, heels and toes, Squish together, the story unfolds of plastic, leather, rubber and glue, up to 45 materials that make up a shoe. One thousand years to slowly rot. One hundred and forty-five million pre-loved pairs now forgot in the UK in a year. Scientists work on sustainable solutions repurposed from the sea of dredged up glistening fishing nets and toxic blooming algae. On closer inspection and deeper reflection of harvesting and making a shoe with 20% cyanobacteria sealed in EVA foam with glue. <laughs> a tidal wave of green washing cannot clean the lies. A marketing dream dissolves under an inquisitive eye. Developments unfold in a radical and new. Nature has the answer. Champion plants to the rescue. Mycelium, apple skins and giant elephant plant leaves. Lovers of the earth in labs now work to weave what may be my wild imagined dreams. This concept stretches my brain to extremes, a possibility not beyond the realms of the ridiculous. Edible shoes. Can you imagine eating your Jimmy Chews? Today, as I stand under the eye of the sun and I give thanks, for all that nature has done, my feet planted on this deep and fruitful earth, may a solution to this issue be birthed. As foot stompers, toe squeezers, squeaky sneakers and dancing divas in glittery rainbow hues, metallic bowie platforms are some of the stylish shoes given to charity or recycled the outcome is the same. Last step landfill, only a destination delay. Let's <laughs> unmute for Jill. <laughs> oh, I, and I know Jill was trying to get hold of me all week to, to share her poem, and I was I was so busy that I couldn't I couldn't hear it. But what a treat that it's been left to this moment. <laughs> First of all, it's massive fun. You know, it's a massively fun, engaging poem. Like we're there, like all of us are there all the way through because it's so enjoyable. Mm. Such good rhyme structure, such good imagery. And it, but it's also kind of got a serious soul to it. And mm. it's a serious subject. Yeah. And that comes across as well. And um, oh, yeah, no, it does. Oh, yeah. It's really well told. You, talk, you tell the seriousness of it and you tell the, with the lightness of it. I really enjoyed it, Jill. Um, has anyone, I know Chris has been with his kids. Anyone else want to say anything? So we, you got some lovely comments. Um, they were, they were... I, I came in on the eating your Jimmy Choose line. Which <laughs> a really great moment to try and pick up the thread. So, um, yeah. <laughs> She, she did a great job she did it was a, it was it was it was a lovely kind of we've had so many like really quite serious poems and really quite dense poems and and this was a really nice moment of lightness but about a serious subject and and it, you performed it brilliantly as well did yeah. i oh yeah. thank you you did you really did perform thank you. it oh my didn't gosh. she perform it brilliantly yeah we were that yeah that's yeah. so 
feel very good. And I'm glad you Thank chucked you. out your original. I think you did a fabulous rewrite. Sometimes we have to, and good yeah. work. So, Thank you. <coughs> Thank Jill, you, who, who would you like to go next? I'm going to, can I just check? Is there a Hayley pull in here? I've got a feeling that she's never been here and she's just always been on my list and maybe never turned up to the workshops. Um, so she's, I'm just going to take off. So, okay. So pick somebody from, from that last seven. Uh, let's go to Susan Taylor. Susan Taylor. Excellent choice. The way I can see you, Susan. Um, Hello, Susan. How are you this evening? Um, yeah, I'm doing all right, thanks. Um, yes, I'm um, really enjoying it. As everyone said, it's it's a, it's a really splendid evening and so varied and so deep and wise. <laughs> no, <that's> entertaining. <laughs> so tell us about your spark, Susan. Well, I've just stayed very close at home and very simple. Um, I have for many, many years had been very lucky to have a weekly veg box from a wonderful biodynamic market garden near Totnes. I was one of its first customers, apparently. They, got, they took the round before they even had the land. It's called the Apricot Centre because they can grow apricots as well as all the usual stuff. And um, I just wanted to talk about what Bob Mayhew, who runs it, talks about, which is the transformational experience of getting back to the earth. They work with um, people with young people with difficulties. And I haven't really put that in the poem, but I just wanted to go for this transformational experience idea. And I just love seeing that farm. Um, I haven't been before. And uh, yeah, uh, Bob wanting to really transform the way people grow and what they eat and uh yeah that's my that well, that was my bag for this one well my veg box for this one so the title is i'm i'm, I'm learning to scroll here uh the title is um it's not not scrolling no i shall have to do it with my with my paper it'll be simpler the title is I should know the title. It's uh, Lives, Livelihoods and the Land, which is from, from Bob, actually. All we need is the sun and the rain and the earth and the grain and the creatures that teach us to fit what life brings into the pattern of things. Earth holds the seeds of our basic needs. What's under our feet provides what we eat. Deep down, we know we reap what we sow. We must claim the land beneath our hands breathtaking and community making, street greenery alters scenery, turning spoil into soil. Gardens meet on every street. Gardeners' parties are where the heart is, fresh food to share. It's no trick, just treat. All we need is the sun and the rain and the earth and the grain and the creatures that teach us to fit what life brings into the pattern of things. Digging the earth is a kind of rebirth. Muddy fingers are harvest bringers. The new tune is grow zucchinis. Radish, lettuce, herbs and land cresses make salad delicious and highly nutritious. Poppy seed shakers are taste bud awakeners. Parrot brudite boost immunity. Peppers as bright as summer sunlight, not off the shelf, just straight to yourself. Just eat them to sweeten your diet. All we need is the sun and the rain and the earth and the grain and the creatures that teach us to fit what life brings into the pattern of things. Plant tenders are message senders, life enhancers, wind dancers, sunshine converters are disaster averters, weather watchers are poverty scotches. The earth heater is water receiver, an energy diva, bringing together sister and brother, father and mother. Yay. 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 Oh, that's glorious. 
I, really I'm gonna, I'll let you talk first, Chris. I'm, I'm uh, gonna. I just gonna say, uh, I just, I, I heard that the other week, and uh, it's just, I think there's something about taking a simple idea and finding so much of the world in that simple idea uh, that is, it's just really, uh, it's just really clear. And uh, the word play is joyful and the message is profound, yet simple, yet kind of weirdly out of reach, yet so within reach. And the Kennings are just absolutely smashing it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just really, really a beautiful, beautiful journey. Thank you. I mean, I was just enjoying the rhythms and the internal rhymings yeah. of the Kennings, and it was just every syllable was just like, oh, she did it. She smashed that 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 sentence in without any waste, with just such beautiful yeah, yeah, rhyming. It was tight. It, just, really it was tight, and it was just every word was right, and it was yeah, it was. Yes, uh, again, veg boxes for all, but it was it was it was really beautiful poem, Susan. And I, I've loved your Kenning's journey, and I've loved the kind of the, the, how that's influenced this poem as well. So, um, good work. Mm. You're on mute, Susan. You're on mute. You're still on mute. That's Simon going. You're on mute from the other. <laughs> <laughs> you're still on mute i, I feel my oh you you came off for a second and then you went back on again try again i don't know what's happening yeah, yeah. i lost my connection but I, I, yeah i've got a little I, I was diligent and wrote down as it was going along so i'm just looking at my little list of who's mike is mike here mike cargo bikes mike as he will be known forever yes he is um let's uh, let's move to you cargo bikes mike where are you in the world today mike i'm at home in Froome. um up the road then uh, you've been the everywhere road, yes. haven't you <laughs> <laughs> yeah a lot more relaxed than i was on monday night <laughs> although uh, it filled a very cold and lonely time on bristol station waiting almost two hours for a train and then the train home on monday which was fantastic but here I am tonight. Um, so tell us about your spark, Mike. So the spark, well, I guess my spark is because I'm quite passionate about cycling and I did a radio show on Froome FM about cargo bikes. And um, it's kind of the bridge between having a bike and having a car. And there's a gap between what you can carry easily on a bike. And, and there's so much potential. So many things don't need to go in vans. And... Um, uh, the more I looked into it, the more excited I came about the idea. And um, I didn't, uh, I had the radio show where I'd interviewed a number of people a few weeks before this started, but I also found um, there's a company in London called Pedal Me, and they're a, a, a company of, um, they do all sorts of cargo deliveries, and they had some great reports and, uh, and stuff that I looked into where, where I got some of my facts from. So um, um, thanks to Pedal Me in, um, in London and uh, the various things they do. So cargo, <clears throat> hold on just take a drink. Cargo bikes deliver. Leaving a trail of fumes in his wake, squashing hedgehogs in his haste, with the windows wound up and the radio loud, white van man sits fuming in a jam. As for me, I'm working to a gentler delivery plan. My movement is without motors, mostly pedals, topped up with sun-soaked and wind-powered e-assist. Just because I'm a cargo bike, don't think that I'm lightweight. With a trailer behind, that's 300 kilos loaded up. Like a fox that knows its patch, I'm weaving my way across town, putting smiles on kids as I take them to school, bringing warm lunch boxes to folks stuck at home, collecting waste food from restaurants to be mulched into compost. And sometimes, as quiet as a mouse, I help people move house. When half of city freight journeys could go by bike, it's a mystery they are still so dedicated to cars. It's beyond time when we need to change the ways that we move stuff around, really change them, 
not just the kind of small change in your pocket, tinkering around the edges kind of change, the kind of bold, hey, that's amazing kind of change, the kind of big change that once was called impossible, because so many things are claimed to be impossible, until suddenly they aren't. Like daytime when it's night, flowers in the garden when it's covered in snow, getting the whole world to stay indoors, uh, until we did or not buying gas and oil from dictators, or even at all. We've seen what happens when streets go quiet, how life just comes back. Ask for your deliveries to get carried that way. Get together with neighbours and buy one to share. Ask your council to have some for hire. We can all play our part in making it happen, cutting down vans one cargo bike at a time. Now's the time to decongest and reclaim and open up our streets, make space for bikes and cities fill with life. Oh, uh, lovely. Really nice. A, a gentle um, cycle through your poem. Um, and a really nice picture, a picture of a better world, a better sort of communities and uh, less road rage and um, a, p a positivity. It was really good, Mike. Um, Chris? Yeah, loved it. I loved it. I loved the, the whole section about, um, it, you know, the impossible until it's just not impossible. And that, that I think that simplicity of, of switching perspectives uh, with all of this, I think it really, really helps. But yeah, I love, love that. I love the journey. Uh, really quite, I want to get one now. Uh, <laughs> so that, that works. It makes me go, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, that Why don't I have one? I'm looking for an excuse to buy one, but they're not cheap. But yeah. I'm not, are they? No. Um, How much are they? How much are these cargo bikes? Everything well, they do vary a lot, obviously. But, um, you know, I mean, and, and cargo bikes mean so many different things. But, uh, you know, we're talking a few grand for, you know, depending on depending on what it is. You know, yeah. there are lots of different kinds. Well, I think you could help cargo bikes sell, sell them by uh, using your poem in their promotion. Definitely. Um, I just have this... So ride your cargo bike through the seagrass, um, <laughs> fill, filled with your um, filled with your magic mushrooms and, and other essential items for the future. Your um, shoes made out of giant elephant palm leaves. Um, so, so my brain is just filled with so many different images of a better world at the moment. I don't know quite what to do with it. So, uh, Mike, who do you want to go next? I'm just scrolling up for the list. Are you going to post it quickly or not? I can. I can post yeah, it. Yeah, post it there. Otherwise, I'll um, I just up. have to remove the people who have been just been, which would be you. Um, uh, we've had Misha as well, haven't we already? Oh yeah, we have Misha. Sorry. Yeah, so you only get to do it once, Misha. Oh, this is shameful. Let's have Anne. Do Let's we? have Please. Anne. Anne, wave that I can see Anne. Hello. Oh, you were like oh. <laughs> cool, you've, had, you've got away with it so far nice I hearing know, I know I've missed it on my, I was hoping to do it on Monday but I had to do another talk on Monday to an art group so uh, yeah I've joined the Wednesday group it's really interesting because I haven't heard any of the, the Wednesday group poems before so it's been really really nice to hear the poems tonight because I've been hearing all the Monday ones um, well, we also did a recording of the Monday session I've sent to everyone today so and I'll, I'll do this too I'll put them up on YouTube so you can watch Watch them again at your leisure. So, um, but tell us about your spark, Anne. Okay, so um, my spark is I, I work, um, one of the things I do uh, is I'm a social prescriber. I work um, um, helping people access art and nature to support their well-being. And I had a conversation with somebody from Natural England a few months ago who was employed by Natural England to work on well-being programs, specifically to reduce the pollution in our water, in our rivers, because of um, medications and, and medicines, pharmaceuticals polluting our waterways. And it reminded me that I originally trained as a scientist um, and I did a master's in the biology of water resource management back in 1995. And I thought, actually, I could just marry the two together and talk about social prescribing to help our water. So it's basically about um, reducing um, medical medicines and drugs going into our water to save our rivers. So it's called uh, Minnows of the World Unite. <clears throat> we are at a watershed where every raindrop descending in flow via bog, brook, beck and burn 
is tainted by tinctures lurking in all that is flushed away. When you go for a pee, do you ever think how it might be impacting our aquatic arteries? Our valley makers and poustic takers are being poisoned by potions. Prozac and painkillers are paralyzing my pelagic pals and I have nowhere to hide. No voice, no escape, no choice of what to bathe, eat and breathe. Those prescriptions you crave made my mate Dave hang out with the brown trout all day. They're high as a kite, got no appetite, rainbow trout transforming gender. Methamphetamine's been discharged downstream every day, a new involuntary mind bender. Shoals of dace off their face, hug the chub, feel the love, big fish, little fish on the rocks. And I have nowhere to hide, no voice, no escape, no choice of what to bathe, eat and breathe. Slick sewage waste, discharged in haste in volumes too large to sustain for my mollusk neighbours filtering labours overdosing on humanity's pain. The reprocessing plants don't have filters enhanced to stop us all re-imbibing. 36 billion to fix it, a high price to pay. A more palatable remedy is social prescribing. Reduce isolation to improve sanitation and save our hydration and beauty filled nation. Please get your MPs to wake up and see it is time to think more holistically. We all need to feel and be heard. So to heal, let's change course, learn to stay well differently. Come world swimming with me and bathe in the forest, skim pebbles, watch birds through the reeds. Escape the cultural reliance on pills, save millions spent on pharmacy bills. Get in flow with us wet ones. Keep all our futures bright. Minnows of the world unite. Our voice, our escape, your choice. It's not just my aquatic friends who will win from a social revolution in well-being. Dive in. <laughs> oh, Anne. Um, uh, um, <laughs> For the for the for the waterways, if we heal people without so much medication, I, I'm feeling. And when you were saying about lobbying MPs, and I was thinking of David Warburton, my MP, <laughs> yeah, thinking ah. who's, who's just who's just going down for his cocaine habit, yeah. possibly ended up in the waterways. Um, yeah. Don't lobby him, but no. um, <laughs> um, but. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> superb, superb job. You had some really great imagery in there. Some really, really great sort of fun kind of uh, sort of similes and and yeah, really, and informative and scientific and and it was quite a curveball thinking about sorting out you know rivers through social prescribing. But you really got that across. Good work. Nice, uh, Chris. Thank you. Yeah, just some lovely, lovely wordplay, um, lovely rhymes, kind of lines bumping up against each other. I just enjoyed being taken into the river and the humour of it. And uh, I felt bad for the fish on speed, but I sort of <laughs> also enjoyed them because you'd put them there. So I thought, well, uh, I'll just buzz with them for a little while. But um, yeah, yeah, great. I see Beth. Beth says in the in the uh, chat. Sadly, social prescribing won't be a transition for my medicines, but it should definitely be a prescription for everyone because nature is healing. Um, so yes, you know nothing is a perfect solution, uh, but everything is a bit of a solution. And I think I love your line about the um, minnows of the world unite. It, it feels really prescient for kind of this particular project i suppose it's like you know it's like we're all feeling like what can i do uh just a little person and uh and if enough little persons do you know such brilliant things as this as you are all doing then um 
it, you know a little bit of minnowing goes a long way um so yeah thank you thank you for that you. loved it great job Anne. and i think we've only got two poets left i realized I, ha I hadn't taken people out if um if if joe and hazel is there anybody is, is there anybody who hasn't been yet who should be um so put your name in the chat if you still quickly now so if not I mean, both these last two candidates are pretty awesome. So I think I, I don't feel like I need to um, uh, suggest who should go last. So I'll let Anne decide who do you want to go next, Joe or Hazel? Um, I'd like to hear Hazel, please, because Hazel introduced me to you in the first place, uh, Liv. So I'm very grateful. Oh, ah, what, <laughs> what, a, what a pleasure and a curse that Hazel gave you. Um... <laughs> this is a bit like being in the football team at school and standing there sort of waiting to be picked so <laughs> me and joe uh we've not picked that last oh well that's no no reference to you it's just people I know, grab I names randomly <laughs> <laughs> um, tell us about yeah. your spark hazel okay so um so i i'm really into permaculture i'm really into growing veg and it's been lovely to hear you know the way all of the topics tonight are quite different but they sort of all you know kind of linked together so um when I was doing my my permaculture design course I found out about something that I could do myself immediately that would be really helpful because sometimes I get quite overwhelmed by you know the worldly doom so this is something that everyone we can all do as well and it's about the, the comfrey plant which is a native a native hedgerow plant um that grows extremely profusely it can be cut five times in a growing season and it, it's got hugely deep roots that that harness nitrogen and you can make fantastically helpful things for your and for your garden that make your vegetables grow grow bigger than all your allotment neighbors which is really fun um and also it encourages uh, pollination and biodiversity and things like that and it makes a mulch and yeah so you can you can just literally immediately go and plant some in your garden and and have hundreds of benefits and you know avoid buying any plant food from a big chemically produced factory um anything like that so yeah really a winner this is a winner of a plant so it's but this is quite a, a small a small sort of homage of a poem yeah um so i'm gonna read it okay symphytum officialis the humble comfrey plant hedgerow lottery win Shabby brown husk, mud-stained irrelevance, a worming trade secret. I salvage her limbs, the possessors of green go juice, and concoct an alchemist stench, feed the green family. Unrivaled at the allotment, sit back and watch the show. Parsnip-fingered wurzel roots bore down, plunder and replunder. Invisible, perpetual an underworld under the world, mine and yours. Conceive again, a hammer cold pregnant pause, a long winter's nap, then, rabid jostling, elbows first, all rough skirts and nodding heads. Teeming with air traffic, badass SWAT team, massive bumble bums, flyer and brimstone. Cut and come again, cut and come again. I will stay with my hands in the soil until it's past your bedtime. Plant my bones here, please. But for now, tea, comfrey tea. And in the end, chuck me on the compost heap. I'm on everyone's guest list, along standing services to the Empire. Finished. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. So, so perfectly formed tribute to the Comfrey Plant with so much joyful, jostling elbow imagery. And um, you can feel that the personification of the life of that, of that plant. It's just, it's a great poem, Hazel. I love it. I love the Comfrey. Go and get some. I can give you some. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give give me some now. Everyone give their addresses to Hazel. And shall we post it out tomorrow in the, in the um, <laughs> um, fabulous Chris? Uh, I was just wondering if anything could be made out of comfrey that would be des described as comfy. So you could have a comfy Ooh. comfrey uh, something. <laughs> Doesn't matter. It was it was an open ended kind of wondering question, mm -hmm. but I loved it. I love. Bristly, 
yeah, you wouldn't want to wear trousers made of it. So it's an uncomfy comfrey. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah fair enough. <laughs> But, um, but I love I love the kind of the, the hands in the earth and the, the you know all those lines with parsnip fingers and wurzel roots <laughs> parsnip fingered wurzel roots that, that was, was a great line yes <laughs> I was going to write it but I knew someone else would so I held off <laughs> yeah <laughs> um yeah it's just you you really conjure it you you we're we're yeah. in there we we've got our hands in the earth you can almost smell it uh and you take us right into Thanks. the heart of it really really lovely yeah thank, thank you. you. Well, Hazel, we have Amazing. almost reached the end of the evening. And what happens to, <coughs> to Joe? Somebody um, might need to mute who has got some I background. Choose Joe Butts. <laughs> yes, choose Joe Butts. Um, we, Joe, we've nearly been seeing it. And what happened to you happened to, on Monday to the person who said, don't, I don't want to go second or whatever. It's third, I've got people coming. And then they were left and last in some kind of strange punishment. Um, did you, is your people hit it? Or you didn't, have you managed to? No, it wasn't about people. It was, it was I knew I'd be interrupted children. before half seven by my son going to bed because he kept rushing in and out wanting to hug me. So I knew there'd be interruptions and I wouldn't be able to concentrate properly. Well, are you ready to see us out in terms of... And, and <laughs> who have you got? Tell us about your spark and tell us about your prop. This is, this is Larry. Hi, Larry. <laughs> and Larry is a... He's, uh, he's a lobster, but a lobster. he's been listening very carefully to everybody. What's his view? What's his opinion? He he would do a thumbs up, but you know, <laughs> no thumbs. Claws up, claws up, claws up. Uh, so I'm hugely into recycling, upcycling, reusing things, um, especially thing the the idea of using unusual things to make up more unusual things. So uh, people making pen pots from old flip flops and glasses from washed up fishing nets and bags out of old marquee tents and that kind of thing um, and my poem is about a company that I found that are making plastic wrap from the waste products of longestein from the food industry <clears throat> this is food for thought the humble longestein serene bursting with protein Caught with a trawl, or better, a creel, we use only the soft parts for every meal. We twist off its head, discard its legs, consider the claws part of the dregs. They get thrown into landfill or just burnt by the million, a waste product reduced to cooked lobster vermilion. Now welcome a crustacean collaboration, extolling the virtues of a plastic-free nation. A science-led group want to change how we think, stop the plastic flowing into the drink. From a crazy idea to upcycle some scampi comes an amazing invention that's upping the ante. Using a fermentation process like yogurt or beer, microorganisms begin to appear. Chitins extracted turned into non-plastic, a natural polymer that's more like elastic. It looks cling film familiar to avoid exclamations, fulfilling the customer's high expectations. It's chemical free, no need to treat it. If food lasts a bit longer, we're more likely to eat it. Biodegradable, compostable, antimicrobial. You can't really beat that strong testimonial. There's even some uses for what's left of the rest. Makeup, fish food, wounds can be dressed. When everything's used, it's just a win-win with fantastical, non-plastical, amazing chitin. From Norwegian seas and some carapace waste, a basket of breadcrumbs with a sea sweet taste, to slowing, decomposing mountains of vegetables, resuming, consuming of edible delectables. These efficient solutions can cull our excess. It's a practical, profitable production process. The next step has to be when we are shopping. Check what we are buying and think about swapping. Aim for a sustainable eco plan. Demand packaging made from Kaitosan. Enjoy guilt-free wrapped food with a glass of Chianti and think of the Dublin Bay prawn vigilante. Instead of riding the plastic tsunami, become a recruit for this Longestine army. Yay. <laughs> wow. Hello. Hello. Wow. <laughs> um, that's just such a brilliant example of a most unexpected small thing that pans out into 
just this brilliant, magical, playful what if. Um, yeah, love the wordplay. I love the rhymes and the rhythm and the kind of journey of it. Um, yeah, check out your chat. There's a lot of love for the longest theme. Uh, yeah, really, really great. I Thank love you. that poem. I love the poem, Joe. And and I I heard it last two weeks ago, and I it was just so joyful and such good rhyming. And as I always say, you know how to rhyme, so you should go for it. But um, but it's just it what. Well, upcycle, I, upcycle some scampi seem to hit I, a nerve with a lot of people scampi is such a good word anyway and um and um but you also really explain it well like you yeah. really explain the yeah. science well in, in a way that's really easy to understand and i think that that's so it seems like it's really simple and it seems like it's really playful and almost childlike but actually it's really what a really excellent piece of communication mm. that, that that absolutely promotes um the, uh, the the power of that shrimpy creature to to make a real difference so <laughs> well i hope i got it right because the scientists never got back to me so it's been a lot of internet trawling <laughs> oh well <laughs> well you know more for them you didn't let that stop you and i think um quite a niche subject i imagine <laughs> so um i think you could probably fully send them that poem and say well i didn't need your help and um, was, when you said a lot of internet trawling, I was just, <laughs> yeah. I, was, I, was, I was scrabbling around for some sort of ghost internet, ghost net. Yes, internet I couldn't get there, but it was you've inspired my brain to at least have a go. Um, you, yeah. She's been in the in the depths. If she's yeah. been in the depths with the um, with the wordplay in relation to longestina shrimps, and uh, she can't you can't help it now. Yeah. But <gasps> wow, wow. <She's> brought, <laughs> What a lot of amazing. Really? Yeah. Really? It blown away. Every single one of them. Every yeah. single one of them a gift. Like Yeah, everyone has turned up. Everyone has smashed it. Really, really, like in just in the last two weeks, all the work that has happened in that in that time. Um, mm. they have all been just cranked and turned and the colours been turned up and they've been buffed and tweaked and polished and really, really inspiring. Thank you so much for giving it all of that. Really, really good. Really good. Um, yeah. It, it's, this book's going to be brilliant. Liz. It's going to be really, really good. Yeah. It's going to actually be a properly amazing book. Um, in a minute, we're going to we're going to ask for the guests to depart and just to keep the poets, um, the poets who performed tonight, and and any who uh, haven't got them, so we can just sort of go brief you on what's next. But to say to the guests, we are going to be making a book out of all these hot poet sparks, and it's going to be a it's going to be an incredible book and um i'm so excited about it um so we're going to have a book of all of these sparks and we're going to do a book launch and I, I want to do this book launch so that you will all have a copy of the book in your hand once we do this book launch on zoom and you can all hold it up um and uh i'll talk to you a bit about how it's going to work in a minute but um what what i think what whew, We've had six weeks, six or seven week journey, but what has been achieved is just absolutely is so validating and mind blowing and inspiring. And yeah. yeah, it's just gone way beyond. I, you know, I knew there would be some great stuff came out of it, but I, I wasn't prepared for quite how brilliant it all was going to be. Um, and uh, yeah, just massive credit to everyone. Uh, this is such an experiment. This whole thing is an experiment and continues to be, but it just gives me so much bloody hope. And I've learned so much from all of you, from all of your investigative poet journalism. Um, and I feel like I'm so much better informed from hearing these poems. And that's the whole point. That's amazing. Exactly. And inspired. The poem doesn't just inform me, it inspires me. And that's then when we can share it with other people, then it, that's when it's doing the work, isn't it? And they're not judgy, but they are a call to action. Yeah. And so they really hit that right note. Yeah, the tone is great. It doesn't feel like anyone's preaching. It, we're celebrating the science. We're celebrating the ideas. We're talking about the potential and what they could do. And um, yeah, it, it's, it's been incredible. So um, thank uh, Hazel you. is saying, will there be a way to share links relating to the science? That's a great question. Um, I mean, that's a really great question. And maybe there's a resource page that we could look at live it wouldn't be that difficult would it it's just like boom here's loads of amazing stuff going on um because i love personally i love it when i find those websites that i can't remember what there's there's one i found in researching something recently it's like here's all the good news stories and you go 
oh my god amazing and uh and, and actually kind of you know it feels like you're breathing oxygen but this is an opportunity for that isn't it is an opportunity yes yes kind of... absolutely we can think of a way of doing that um and we'll talk about all that in a minute with the question because i think i want to say to all of the people who joined us and some of them have gone now but who haven't been involved in this project thank you so much for coming yeah it's been an absolute pleasure to have your support and to all the scientists and partners and people who have talked you know thank you your help has been if, invaluable. if um if you're in or near london on the 22nd of april then uh we're doing our big finale show i put it in the chat again um with uh, almost all of the hot poets who've taken part in the first round of the project and uh we will also be sharing the poems of our two brilliant competition winners uh and the tongue free band will be there and it's at the purcell room at the south bank which is kind of quite a big deal for us so if um if you wanted to come along and cheer and enjoy this with an amazing band performing with it and celebrating what we've achieved so far um because it really is just so far this feels yeah. like round one and Liv and i are now kind of going oh my god this has got so much uh there's so many things that we've learned mm -hmm. and we're just sort of trying to figure out <sighs> what the next bit looks like but yes we've got to live up to best poem as well so we've yeah, got yeah. To, um... yeah you've, you've, you've definitely painted us into a corner there as, uh... but so it's not <laughs> the finale show it's the finale of this stage but yeah. there it, hot poets is not going anywhere and we anticipate that it's gonna grow and be my, like, a little bit like a mycelium network it's gonna it's gonna become bigger and more and um we're really excited about the next stage of it and what's going to happen and what's going to happen with your poems please share your poems in whatever way you want to share them now and perform them and take them to open mic nights and talk about hot poets and you know let's get these messages out there i think that's really important um but let, let's say to everybody who um who isn't isn't one of the poets from tonight um you can go now you can go into the ether unless you are a poet from monday's group who wants to hear us to a talk about what happens next again but otherwise yes thank, thank you, you very thank much you so let's much. all wave at them thank you very much thank for joining you so much us. for coming in thank you 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 bye bye thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you um I don't know who Yvonne Davy is. She might have gone out to, you know, left it. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna remove, remove, remove her. Oh, um, um, is this? Are we? Are we left with just the poets from tonight? Yes. Well done, guys. <laughs> amazing work. Mashers. Really, really amazing work um so we're gonna go around really quickly and you get to each say just like something about what it's been like for you and just you know like a little check out but just to see what happens next can you please send me the written versions you've got until i think it's the 10th of april to send me the, the written version if you could send them to me on word that would be amazing and if you could send a little like your spark so a little a couple of lines just contexting what the idea was and then if you have any thank yous of people who have supported you please spell their names right and uh, tell me and if you want to send a, a link a research link that people can follow please do that but make sure it's kosher make sure you've checked it out and you're not sending me any weird dodgy links because i'm not going to be able to check everything so yeah if you send me the names of the people who've helped you any kind of link for reference but yeah a couple of lines on the spark and your poem as well get somebody to check it over for uh, grammar and spelling as much as you can um but if you could send that by the 10th that would be great and we we're also saying if you want to send like a little haiku um about to go with it you're very welcome so we can create a bit of sort of sort of smaller moments in the in the book that would also be wonderful but the book's going to be going to be amazing what a well, it feels like it will fall into chapters because we have themes, themes of different part, you know, under the sea, you know, under the under the ground, you know, there's all these kind of like in the air, different things happening. So, um, yeah, so that's what I'm going to say about that. But as we go around, if you have questions, you can you can answer them. But yeah, let's go. Beth, how's it been for you, the project and tonight? Oh, I've loved it. Um, as you might have been able to tell by my poem. I think that it's a very good project. Uh, you know, it could be could be quite a good thing, I think. Um, and I, I genuinely, I genuinely do think though that it it could be something huge and amazing. And it's honestly a privilege to be 
part of it and to hear 